Everything my dog and I need to survive for a few days is on our backs and we're off to find a lake deep in the mountains of British Columbia. The hardest part of solo hiking and camping is just getting started. Getting up and out of our comfortable, temperature-controlled home, exposed to the elements, drinking lake water. It's funny, when the comforts of the modern world are stripped down to the minimum, it's when I feel the most alive. This has been a long and bumpy road, but we're almost there. The Subaru, I think I've pushed it to its limits. Kind of makes me want to switch it out for a truck. It's been really good to me the past two years, but I just would feel a little bit more safer in a bigger machine. The air just smells so fresh out here. I'm so stoked to be out here. We drove to the wrong trailhead, so we added a couple hours to our drive, what's new? But it ended up being nice because the sun is going down slightly, so it's not too hot. Kira's been loving all the dogs we've run into on this trail. And there they are, looking super blue. That was probably three seconds for you guys. For me, it was an hour and a half. Every week when Friday hits in the summer, it's a chance to drive a few hours to the mountains, hike out of service, far from civilization, forget about responsibilities and work projects and where I want to live, and just survive. Oh my god, there's not a cloud in the sky. It was the super blue moon two nights ago. Of course it was a weekday, so I couldn't get outside and it was super cloudy, but I think the moon's going to be pretty full tonight anyways. So this is everything I bring. This is everything I bring for Kiro. A little microfiber cloth. It weighs practically nothing and it dries really quick for his paws. This is my sleeping pad and this is his. For a sleeping bag, he won't stay inside of mine, so I just use my big winter one for the both of us. And if the blankets ever come off him in the middle of the night, I bring his little fleece sweater. It's dinner time, so we're bringing our food bag away from camp. We're going to go eat somewhere we can hang it. Around. Around. Thank you. It's kind of windy, so hopefully you can hear me, but I have this little stasher bag. It's just a half size sandwich one, and I dehydrated some chili in it that I made at home. And I was going to pour some hot water in it and just let it sit for a few minutes and then put it with some wraps, but I think I'm going to save that for tomorrow. Wash our hands. <laughs> Got our water for the morning, for coffee, and for Kiro. Now what do you want to do? Get the zoomies? This place is so beautiful, but there's no fish. I didn't bring my fishing rod. So tomorrow we're gonna have some coffee. We're gonna have a chill morning and then we're gonna hike out of here and go to a different lake that's just down the street from here and put my paddleboard in the water and try and camp on an island over there and do some fishing. But it was a long weekend, so we had to get a two-nighter in. But we're gonna do some more exploring in this beautiful sunset before the sun goes down and we have to get into our tent. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's 
what I get for wearing trail runners and not hiking boots. <laughs> oh, your breath stinks. She stomp, she stomp, she do the no stomp. Just kidding, it's not that channel. <laughs> you guys, I see a bear. I'm not kidding. Oh my god. Oh, it looks brown. You can see it running. So I've never seen a bear before going to sleep in the backcountry. <laughs> I've only ever seen one from my car. So it should be a fun night's sleep. Might have to take a melatonin. <laughs> but our food is away from our tent. That's why we ate away from our tent. And I'm glad we explored the other side of the hill, not the one that he was on. But I do have my bear spray always strapped to my waist. First bear sighting while I'm in a tent. <laughs> the sunset is so pretty tonight. People always ask me how I don't get lonely solo camping out here in the backcountry, but I find comfort in the silence. By the second day, anything that I'm thinking about back at home just kind of goes into the back of my head and I just feel a lot more present and conscious of the sightings and smells around me, even with a bear roaming around the hills behind where we're sleeping. I consider myself a really positive person and never would have thought that I would do therapy, but I find myself feeling a lot of empathy for others closest to me. I carry their struggles that they might be going through pretty heavily on my shoulders. So for days where I'm not able to be in the backcountry, which is pretty much Monday to Friday, I'm really grateful to share today's sponsor and that's BetterHelp. Therapy never seemed affordable or accessible to me, but BetterHelp aims to solve both of those problems. Finding a therapist you connect with can be really challenging, especially when you're an introverted hermit like myself, but it's entirely online, remote, and if you're not clicking with your current therapist, you can switch, no questions asked. There's a link in my description if you're interested in checking it out. That gives you 10% off and it really helps Kiro and I. I personally really love the app. I can check in with my therapist any time of the day. I can just send a little text in the app and they'll get back to me within two days. And I was shocked at how understanding and it was just nice to kind of be understood and not judged by a third party. So if you're also looking for someone to talk to, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. And thank you again so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this portion of the video. Come. It's gonna be very cold tonight. So we're putting his fleece sweater on because he always pushes the sleeping bag off. I can tell he's cold when he puts himself into a little ball. We gotta make sure he's warm. Why is it so tight on you? <laughs> what have you been eating, buddy? Oh, he's so handsome. Kiro's got his little sweater on. It's only 8.30, but it's gonna get nice and cold, but we're staying cozy. That was one of the most beautiful sunsets I've seen in a long time, but we have had a long day, so we will see you in the morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kiro. Time. <laughs> I feel like I need to get a second dog just so I can entertain the first dog. <laughs> I'm a one dog person. I, c I couldn't, it would be too much. Especially because I've started to really rethink my living situation. The Subaru has been great, but I did pop the tire the other weekend. But I'm thinking about getting new tires and then I was like, well, what if I just got a bigger rig that I could explore more places in more often and stay outside for longer periods? 
periods of time. If anyone has any advice for looking for truck campers, let me know down below. It's getting really cold. The fall days are quickly approaching. So I'm thinking that we pack up, hike out of here and go to that lake and try and get some early bites. I think it's one of the last opportunities I'm gonna get to go on my paddleboard. I've never taken the poles down first. I don't know why I did that. I forgot to shake out my tent. One of the reasons why you always wanna make sure you shake out your tent besides keeping it clean is because there could be invasive species of different seeds and plants that got into your tent and the next time you shake it out at the next place, you've now brought those invasive species to the next campsite. I am gonna do some winter camping next year with these cold fall mornings. Technically it's the end of summer. They're a reminder of what's to come. I've gotta cherish these last days of summer. Clouds are looking dark and ominous. I don't know if fish still feed when it's raining. Stay on the path. They're supposed to be going downhill when you hike out, but we're just going up. It dipped into a valley and we have to hike back out of it. I always feel so much better after it though. I think that's what you call type two fun. It's nice afterwards. In the moment, it's a struggle. I think in another month or so, all of these trees are going to turn yellow. You can kind of see, you can kind of see the needles turning yellow here. They're called larches and they're so beautiful. They're one of the only coniferous trees that turns yellow and then all their pine needles fall off in the winter just to grow back the next season. And we're back just like that. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Did I leave my keys in the backcountry? It is not the first time I've left my car unlocked. Oh my gosh, why do I always do that? <sighs> I swear I locked it. People who camp are sometimes the nicest people. So nothing was stolen, we're good, and we're off to the next lake to do some fishing. We've run into some rain, and this lake is a lot bigger than I thought it was. So I'm thinking it's gonna be choppy out there and cold. Big pot of pasta, comfort food on this rainy day. <laughs> We've been driving for a very long time, haven't we? Okay, yep, that's the end of our road. I cannot go up that. Sometimes, when you're adventuring new places, it just happens that the road will be completely washed out. So we are going to have to pivot and have to go back to the main road. I've been on these back roads for like three hours. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we've been pulled over for a while. I've scoured Google Maps for lakes with rec sites. I've looked at Fishbrain, which is an app I use to see if there's fish in these lakes. And there's not any good ones that have secluded rec sites. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm not really looking for a pull up and camp shoulder to shoulder. This was still a really fun weekend, so thanks for being here and we will see you next week.